Okay, so here's the experiment. We're going to, it's called a field mapping experiment. We're actually going to map out electric fields. And we have to do a little bit of theory uh, after this to, to show you what's going on here. And again, you're not going to get this to until you get to chapter 24, I think it is, in Surway, which is th um, three weeks away, two weeks away. So anyway, uh, but you do need to know something about that in anticipation of that theory uh, to figure out how to measure the strength of an electric field. Okay, so we have here a, a rather strange looking black piece of paper. Uh, actually, it's, it's a kind of a thick black piece of paper. Uh, and it's, it's, it's graphite coated or graphite impregnated paper. Graphite is carbon. Carbon is in the middle of the periodic table. It has four electrons and it's happy with them. And it's also happy to share. So uh, that's the basis of organic chemistry. <laughs> in any case, uh, I, I've drawn on this. So it's, carbon is a semiconductor. It conducts a little bit of electricity, but not very much. It's not a very good conductor, not like steel or copper or whatever, any metal, almost any metal. Uh, but it's a, it's, a, it's a semiconductor. And I need that because this, this voltmeter, which you, you've already used or, uh, before, uh, has to have something to go through it to measure. In other words, it's got to have some current to go through the, the wires to be able to measure what that, what that current is. Or it's got to have something going on if it's measuring voltage, it's got to have something going uh, through the electrical system in the meter to cause it to read voltage. Uh, let's not get too much into electronics. So uh, on this, on this uh, piece of semiconductor paper are drawn two uh, parallel uh, lines with honest to goodness uh, silver ink. Every one of these patterns like it's got 50 cents worth of silver on it but don't go scratching it off and try to sell it so anyway or well maybe it's only 10 cents i don't know but it's it's got some silver on it so silver is a really good conductor like it's one of the better metal conductors and so it conducts electricity and it can conduct electricity from one side to the other uh, or from the middle to the outside and it can set up an electric electric potential, we'll get to that later, uh, electric potential here and another electric potential here. So we have two leads uh, on meters. One's a black lead, one's a red lead. And uh, there's the red lead over here. It's connected to this black lead over here uh, at, the, at the power supply. And so we can measure voltages. In fact, uh, I've got this set at roughly uh, six volts. So let's check that out. Okay, it's a little bit high. Uh, this is very delicate. I wouldn't mess with this. We're, we're going to try to set this for you so that it stays at six. Uh, so I can turn this down just a little bit so that it's closer to six. Oh, that's close enough. Okay, that's six volts. So I'm going to connect this red. First of all, I'm going to pin this down so it's not so curled up and stays nice and flat for my experiment. These are metal push pins, which means they're conductors. And they will transmit the voltage, or they'll carry the voltage to wherever we put this. Now, so I've got these pins. Uh, I've got these little clips here on these pins so that they're like in the, in the same direction as the pin itself. And the reason for that is uh, you'll learn it later, as I mentioned earlier, that the electric fields uh, can be set up by single charges, like we talked about for Coulomb's law, or they can set up, be set up by a whole bunch of charges. There's a whole bunch of charges in this wire, uh, and they're put there by this voltage supply, which pushes the charges in the wire. So I'm going to connect uh, very carefully, this wire, this wire to with this push pin, and I push it fairly hard, uh, so that it makes a good contact, good electrical contact with that, with that silver line. Okay. You know from the song, there's a silver lining in anything. Well, this is a silver line. It's not quite a lining. 
And so this black lead here is going to be connected to the other line. And I'm going to make, push it down so that it's uh, nice and uh, flat. There is an electric field set up by these wires. And I really don't want to have it mess with the electric field set up on this, on this pattern here. This is kind of like a two-dimensional electric field. So I'm getting those wires away from the pattern. That's why I've got them hooked up that way, and so they're not resting on the pattern. So I don't want the electric field of that wire to be fighting the electric field on this pattern. Okay, so we've got them all hooked up. And uh, if I look over here at this, take a look at the meter, uh, look over here on this, it's almost six volts here. It's six volts here, 5.93, six volts here. It's 5.93, 5.93. It's 5.93 all the way from the left to the right end of that pattern, of that line, that silver line. Uh, and again, I guess the meters changed a little bit, so it was closer to six, but it was, it's 5.93. And over on this side, uh, the, the voltage is zero, or almost zero. It's not quite zero on the ends. It's almost zero. It's close enough to zero to call it zero, okay. So on this end, it's a little bit not quite zero. But. OK, there. If you, it's pretty much zero everywhere. OK, so this is called the zero volt line. And this is the six volt line. And we call them equal potential lines, equal potential lines, equal potential lines, because they have the same potential, the same voltage. Those are not quite interchangeable. The same voltage is zero on this line and six on that line. Uh, we're just not, this is a semi-quantitative experiment, so you can't get too, too fussy about, oh, is it 6.03 or is it 5.3, 5.92 or what? It's six volts, give or take a little bit, but not much. Okay, so we're going to be drawing some lines here and measuring some values and, uh, uh, you know, they're, they're kind of crude. So you can't really do a sophisticated error analysis here because it's a semi-quantitative experiment. That's OK for once. So I have set up everywhere in space, everywhere in the universe, an electric field uh, uh, that's emanating from these two lines. Now my job, or your job, is to measure uh, the locations in the electric field. We've already done the six volt line and a zero volt equal potential line. Your job is to find the one, two, three, four, and five volt potential line, equal potential lines and mark them with a piece of chalk. And I'm not going to do that because I don't want to mess up this pattern. But uh, you, why do we use chalk? Because chalk is, a, is not a conductor. It's, it's, it's not even a semiconductor. Lead pencil lead is not lead. It's graphite. Oop, graphite. That's what this thing's made out of, and it's a semiconductor. So you don't, don't want to use, with, you don't want to draw on this with a pencil, because it's like adding more lines, more equal potential lines or whatever, uh, to the pattern. So you don't want to do that. So we're going to use pieces of chalk, and we're going to mark on this grid, which is by the way a centimeter by centimeter grid. Uh, we're going to mark on this grid where all the lines, where all the points are that are not all of them, but many of them, that are 1 volt, 2 volts, 3 volts, 4 volts, and 5 volts. OK, so uh, let me take this and look over here. Uh, that's 0 volts. We checked that before. This is n f about 6 volts. We've checked that before. So somewhere in the middle ought to be about 3 volts. Oh, and let me move that. OK, there it is. It's, it's surprisingly, or not surprisingly, exactly in the middle, because 3 is exactly the, the middle between 0 and 6. OK, so there's 3 volts. So I'm going to find another 3 volt point here, uh, and I'll put a dot there. And i find a 3 volt point here and put a dot here. And you'll find, probably, uh, depending on the quality of the pattern, uh, that that line basically goes, goes straight across, or pretty much straight across. So put a, a bunch of dots here. No, 12, 15, 20, whatever dots, just what we just did, what I just did. And put a dot where the, where the probe is touching the paper. And then connect those dots. Again, that's called an equipotential line. And that's the 3-volt equipotential line. OK, let's take a look 
at the two volt line, for instance. So the two volt line ought to be closer to the zero volt uh, equal potential line. It's going to be over here someplace, and there it is. It's pretty much, uh, I've kind of planned it this way, that is these two lines are six centimeters apart, and we've got six volts here, mm. so it's about one volt per centimeter, right? So every centimeter, here's the, Here's the one volt line, it's at one centimeter. There's a two volt line, it's at two centimeters. Here's a three volt line, we already saw that, that's three centimeters. Here's a four volt line, it's at four centimeters. Here's a five volt line, it's at five centimeters. No surprise, right? So what you're gonna get here, and I'm not gonna tell you what you're gonna get elsewhere, but what you're gonna get here in between these two lines are five parallel lines, essentially one centimeter apart. And we want to talk about that a little bit later in terms of how do you analyze this. So, but then when it, when it comes out here, let's look for the two volt line here. So two volt line, I just keep poking around until I find the two volt line and getting, it's, I'm getting warmer, I'm getting warmer, almost there. Okay, there's a two volt point. And it's, it's kind of, it's going away from this two, second line here, it's going out this way. So you want to look for that two volt line everywhere. There's got to be a two volt line out here someplace. Okay. There it is. The two volt line is way out there. So trace the two volt line all the way from this, like this white border, from one side all the way across to the other side. There's a two volt line right over there. Okay, two volt point. So put, put little dots there and draw that. Uh, don't draw the line in because if you start smudging this, if you start drawing lines with the chalk marks and chalk lines, you're going to get it all smudged up. So we're going to we're going to produce this pattern and take it off, take the, the leads away, and then with a piece of chalk, draw a line from one side to the other that marked the two volt potential, equal potential line, and the three volt, and the four volt, and the five volt, and the one volt. So you get a pattern, and we have to talk about. What do you do with that pattern? How do you get the electric field out of that pattern? Okay, and then we'll do one with two circles. Uh, and I want you to especially measure the voltage inside, inside of those two circles and make a note of that and think about what that means. You may not understand really well what that means until we get to the chapter on electric fields and electric potentials and things like that. But see what you get experimentally, and if you don't know quite what to make of it, at least report what you get experimentally. So that uh, what's the voltage inside of each of those circles? Uh, and you'll hook them up like this. One wire to one circle, one wire to the other circle. Okay, so I'm not going to fill out this pattern, but you can see that the lines kind of diverge as they go out here and they go out here, and you want to look for uh, lines uh, everywhere. So uh, here's a here's a one volt line here. There's a one volt line out here someplace like here, uh, and there's no one volt lines in here uh, until I get over to here. And there's another one volt line. Okay, so that one volt line kind of wraps around a little bit. Okay, so that's that's the way you do this experiment and uh, finish up. All, all five lines, if, if, they, if they start to get kind of confusing, maybe you want to draw a little bit of a line to make sure you know that's the one volt line, that's the two volt line. Uh, especially for the circles, it's going to be a little bit more tricky. Um, and then we will take a, a, a photocopy of this so that you can work on this, do any analysis without smudging up all your lines. And so we'll, at that point, when you're done with both copies, <clears throat> or if there's time in between, if you're done with one copy, uh, Marie will run out and make photocopies for you <clears throat> so that you can work on them without smudging things. Okay, that's it. It's pretty simple lab. So, analyzing this. Again, it's a, it's a, it's a semi-quantitative. You can't do a, like a percent error to 1.3 percent or something like that. Now, it's kind of crazy. You can do you can do a discussion of the error and so forth because uh, we always like to do that. 
Okay, so this is six, this is zero volt equal potential line. This is a six volt equal potential line. Equal potential means it's at the same voltage. Voltage and potential are uh, very closely related. So uh, let me just make up what it kind of looks like based on what you saw me do just a bit ago. So the three volt line probably goes pretty much straight through. Well, it depends on the quality of the paper and the quality of these two lines and, and the, the evenness of uh, the graphite on the paper and so forth. So there's, there's a lot of variables here. So let's look at the two volt line. You saw the two volt line was doing something like this. All right, and you also saw the one volt line. If you remember my drawing, uh, my look, probing around, poking for it, it looks something like this and something like this. This is the one volt, that's the two volt. And there's a four and a five volt. They pretty much look like the flip side, literally, of this pattern here. So uh, let's just, I'm going to fake this pattern so it's going to look something uh, like this. Oops. Something like that. That's kind of what yours is going to look like. OK, so you see a lot of symmetry here. So I'm going to save you 50% of the time, at least, or maybe 75% of the time, if you're lucky because there's a lot of symmetry here. And it, no, it's not the same exactly as it is down here. And so if your pattern is not quite the same, you might have to say, well, well, okay, this side and this side are the same. So I'm going to, in my mind, just analyze one side or the other. And that's enough because this side and that side pretty much doing the same thing. And if, if it's really super symmetric, like this is almost symmetric, and then you can say, well, I'm just going to analyze one quarter of it because all these quarters are the same or pretty close to the same. Again, this is a semi-quantitative lab. So, uh, you know, we're not going to get all hung up over numbers. This is as, as at 0.6, is at 0.7. No, we're not going to get hung up on that. So uh, this is the 4-volt line and the 5-volt line and the 6-volt line. Okay. So that's what your pattern is going to look like. I shouldn't give away the answer, but... But there it is. Uh, but you've got to do it. OK. So we have these equal potential lines. Now, <clears throat> the nice thing about fields, we have to thank the English for doing this, is that you can look at this and see already, maybe, where the field is stronger and where it's weaker. So where do you think it's stronger and where do you think it's weaker? I'll give you a second to think about that. OK, time's up. <laughs> I think. Uh, you can see, I think, just by looking, that the field is pretty strong in here, and it's getting weaker and weaker out here. It doesn't go as 1 over r squared, but it gets weaker. Uh, here, the lines are not diverging like the spokes in the wheel, but they're, they're spreading out here. Okay, so you can look at this and see where the field's strong and where it's weak. You can see sort of the density of these lines. Better yet, I'm going to say how fast the lines are changing with distance. For instance, uh, OK, so here's a definition. Here's how the electric field is related to this is an equation that you'll be dealing with in a few chapters. But it's, it explains what's going on here if you understand what this is. So uh, here, uh, delta V is always 1 volt because 0 from 1, 1 from 0, 2 from 1, and so forth. All these are all 1 volt apart. So the difference in the voltage between one line and the next line is always 1 volt. So it's always going to be 1. And here, <coughs> uh, delta R, we've got to talk about that. Delta R is some kind of a distance, right, or a change in position. Delta means a change. R means position, change in position. So what do we do here? Well, here's what you've got to do. This is your uh, uh, challenge. Once you get this pattern, <clears throat> you've got to figure out the electric field <clears throat> everywhere in half or a quarter of this piece of paper. OK, so uh, there's 
Let me get another pen. <clears throat> So I'm going to put a little Max down here. I know Max is a student in one of my labs, but that's OK. Uh, Max. Max means maximum as opposed to Maximilian. OK. <clears throat> so what do they put that there for? Well, this is where you're going to have to wait for a while to get this figured out. So this, uh, this expression here is called a gradient. How something changes with distance is a gradient. Like if you're going up a hill, you're getting higher and higher with, with your steps. So if you, have, if you have a hill, you're going up like this, and a hill, and hill you're going up like this, this hill has a bigger gradient than that hill because you're changing your height faster with distance here than you are here. So this has a steeper gradient. When they build interstates, they try to keep the gradients to a 6%. That is a 6, six this way, 100 that way, 6% gradient. So your uh, cruise control doesn't automatically have to shift up and down all the time. Whatever. That's not the real reason. So, uh, so uh, that's, that's what the, that's what this is, this is a gradient. It's called a spatial gradient because it has to do with, with space or position. Uh, or you can call it a voltage gradient if you want, voltage with position. OK, so uh, why do I put this max here? It's because you'll learn in chapter 24 or when you get to uh, whatever book you might be looking at, uh, when you get to electric potentials, which is what we're talking about, you see, uh, we have uh, the fact that the electric field is in the in the negative direction. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, in in the, in the negative direction of the direction which the voltage you have equal potential lines, equal voltage lines changes the fastest with distance. That's what that means. So if I go from uh, say zero volts to one volt here, I would go from here to here. That's quite a distance. But if I go from 0 volt to 1 volt here, that's a really short distance. In fact, the shortest distance to go from 0 to 1 volt is where you draw a line that's perpendicular from the, perpendicular from the 1 volt line to the 0 volt line. That's what this really means. So, And again, just by looking at it, you can see the field is strongest here, right? What does that mean? That means you don't go very far before you change by one volt. So this is a small number. That's always one volt. So if that's a small number, if it's the smallest, then this number is the biggest, which is the electric field direction. So this is kind of nice. So, so what you do then is you have to do this, draw lines perpendicular to these. The electric field direction is in the direction perpendicular to all these, these lines here. So. I'm going to go from here to here to here to here and over to the 6 volt line. So that's an electric field line. And the electric field lines here are probably pretty much straight over. But here's the, the, the things are spreading out. So here's a field line that goes from here to here to here to here to here to there. I'm hitting, I'm going across these, these equal potential lines at right angles. I didn't do such a hot job there, but at right angles to every line. So that's what this means. The shortest distance from uh, electrically from this line to this line is a perpendicular to each of those lines. So those I've just drawn a picture of the electric field lines. There's another line like that over here and so forth. There's a line like that goes comes out here, goes perpendicular, 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 and they're like that. So these are pretty arbitrary, but again, they should be pretty symmetric. OK, so again, that's how I draw the field lines. And what the minus sign means is the electric fields go from a high potential to a low potential. So they go this way. They go from 6 to 0, not 0 to 6. Uh, so that's what the minus sign means. The electric field is in the direction in which the potentials 
go down, which kind of makes sense, I hope. And so that's what the minus sign is all about. So now you know the inner workings of the chapter on how the electric potential and electric fields are related. We know this. We're going to learn a little bit more, little bit more about that in specific later on. So here's this pattern. It's, it's emerging. I'm not going to draw the whole pattern. You're going to draw the whole pattern and draw enough lines here that you, you uh, fill up. There's a line that goes off the paper and comes back on over here, something like that. I don't know. So you want to draw enough field lines that you have uh, pretty much filled up this page or half the page or a quarter of the page with electric field lines. Now, the, the trouble is you've got to label this on a piece of black paper, which is tricky. So there's all kinds of subtle ways to do that. Uh, you can use you know, white marking correction fluid or whatever. whatever. We'll, we'll try to copy this so it's lighter than the, the black paper so that you can actually write on it and you can see what's going on. So the electric field here, uh, let's, say, let's say this is uh, 10 centimeters from here to here. And the voltage change, of course, is always one volt. So the, volt, the electric field here is about one-tenth of a volt per centimeter. One-tenth, one divided by 10, a tenth of a volt per centimeter. And the electric field here, as I told you earlier, is about one volt per centimeter because the lines are one centimeter apart and the voltage difference is one volt. So it's pretty simple. It's kind of fun. Uh, and brings back fond memories of uh, connect the dots days in grade school and so forth. So that's the theory behind it. That's some of the theory behind it. You'll get into more theory as you get into the chapter on the electric potential difference, which is called voltage uh, or, and, uh, and the electric field. But that's how, that's how you map out the electric field in this case. So the mapping out of the electric field with the two circles is going to be a little bit different, a little bit trickier. Uh, a little, uh, there'll, be, there'll be lots of symmetry there too, and you can also uh, analyze half of it or a quarter of it, uh, and you have to somehow come up with a table that shows you where am I talking about. So I'm going to label this A, and I'm going to label this B, and I'm going to label this C, and D and E and F or something like that. And so uh, I'm going to run out of letters pretty quickly. Uh, but uh, so the field here is weaker than the field here. The field here is stronger than the field here because I go a shorter distance to go by a one volt change. So you can see that. You can see it coming. And so a nice visual lab for change. OK, that's it.